Welcome back. Thanks for joining me again at the Vice Sword and Musket Weapons discussion and uh, collecting information channel. Today, I'm going to talk about something which was sparked off by a random Facebook post which I saw the other day. It wasn't anybody I knew. It was just a picture of Gary Cooper in a World War I black and white. There he was out in combat in the trenches. He had his doughboy steel helmet on and his uh, World War I uniform, but in his hand he was holding a Luger. And of course there was instant uproar on Facebook. What was he doing holding a Luger? Well, we all know that uh, troops would grab whatever they could and if they fancied a luger or something along those lines they might get hold of one uh, from the enemy uh, it wasn't clear what caliber it was because lugers by their very nature uh, uh, require very close examination um, to identify exactly what they are or where they come from now it just so happens there's another explanation that could have accounted for the Luger in that the US Army, particularly the cavalry, were trialing a 1900 Patton or um, Luger in their own caliber, which was 765, what is known as 765 Luger or 30 caliber Luger in America. And that is one of the strange calibers that we can have and hold as a historic piece if it was made prior to 1900 um, in a section 71 weapons collection. So what we have here is just such a pistol. They were also sold commercially um, onto the American market and this box although the lid is a facsimile shows how they might have been marketed so on the front it says Luger automatic pistol 7.65 millimeter brackets 30 cal shoots soft nose or full metal patched cartridges at the rate of 116 per minute with a muzzle velocity of 1,150 feet per second. It has a range of 2,000 yards and greater killing power than a 45 caliber revolver. Quite a claim. Description, 1 pound 13 ounce. Uh, length of barrel, 4.8 inches. Magazine holds eight cartridges. Distance between sight eight and a half inches. A. H. Funk, 83 Chambers Street, New York. So, in suspiciously good condition because it is a reproduction. So, it will probably come wrapped in grease proof paper with its cleaning equipment and its little spanner, which I don't have here at the moment. So, just to check that the Pistol is safe before we go wa waving it around, etc. We pull the toggle back, look in the chamber. We can see it's empty. I've taken the magazine out. One safe to handle pistol. So there we have it. Typically Luger magazine. Um, an aid to loading was this button on the side. Not so easy in the old gloves, but you can depress the magazine floor plate because the spring is very powerful, and then you can just drop the rounds in. You can hear how powerful that is. I let go of it. Standard oak base to the magazine, just a thing they did. I'll put that in the box. Right, the pistol itself. Wooden grips, glued finish, thumb safety on the side, 
push it up, will not fire, push it down, depress, grip safety, and it should fire if it's cocked. So let's let's have a go. Depress, grip safety, single hand, little click, and then all hell breaks loose if you've got it loaded. Namely, this knuckle rises, pulls the, the block back, ejects the cartridge, the powerful spring from the magazine pushes up and reloads very, very quickly. Um, I am no Luger expert, but I've learnt that there are a lot of differentiating rating factors with these pistols and things to look at. Um, the main thing to look at is the fact that this was made by DWM, which can be seen on the toggle just because it's been heavily polished. And then the main other factor that you're looking for is this American Eagle on the receiver. So there you have the proud American Eagle denoting an American pistol, an American caliber. Um, fixed sights on the rear, dovetail sight on the front, which can be moved across by tapping over with a drift to obtain your zero, four and a half inch barrel, checkered wooden grips, wide trigger guard and wide trigger. Um, this pistol, very ergonomically designed, very typical of the German or mid-European development of arms or side arms. We'll go into stripping and taking it to pieces another time, but I just wanted to show you, oh, being sent to America, it's got Germany stamped on the front and then its serial number, which is 8141. Typical of any we weapons that went into America. There is a, a toggle, um, a, a cutout for a strap and a lanyard, so you don't lose it. But there we have it, the American Luger. Pretty thing. Not smothered in serial numbers. Uh, and not smothered in German proofs, because it was for the American market. There we have it. A little bit of information for you regarding Luger's offer for America. Um, they became, DWM actually became disillusioned with the American trialing procedures and practically dropped out of the process. And then, of course, the Americans adopted the 1911 as their main arm, which served them very, very well. So there we have it. One commercially marketed American Luger. You can get Swiss. The Swiss were very interested in. You'll find them with a big Swiss shield upon them. And the French made them as well. Um, but there we have it. I hope you enjoyed that. It's uh, by Sword and Musket signing off again. Join me click like or subscribe and we'll talk about more interesting things in the future take the gloves off to switch off the camera <laughs>